So in this problem, we're told a projectile is fired with an initial speed of 46.6 meters per second at an angle of 42.2 degrees above the horizontal on a long, flat firing range. And we're going to be determining a bunch of things. First, we're going to find the maximum height reached by the projectile. Then we're going to find the total time in the air. Then we're going to find the total horizontal distance covered by that. And then we're going to be finding the velocity of the projectile 1.5 seconds after firing. So first thing I want to do is kind of draw what's going on. So we're going to be finding this projectile 42.2 degrees above the horizontal. And its initial velocity is going to be 46.6 uh, meters per second. So the first thing I always like to do when I solve these problems is I write down the given. So since we're dealing with kinematics in the two dimensions, you always want to write out given in the x direction, and then we're going to write down the given in the y direction. And so we want to break this down into each of the variables that are used in kinematics. So we have the initial velocity in the x, the initial velocity in the y, the final velocity in the x, the final velocity in the y. Uh, we have acceleration in the x, acceleration in the y. And then we have the change in the x, the change in the y, and then we have time. These are just going to be the same for each one, though. So. I always like to write this out just because it makes it solving a lot easier. Okay. So first thing I always want to do is decide what we actually have. So what different things are we given? So first thing I always know when I'm dealing with a two-dimensional kinematic problem, I know the acceleration in the X, unless specified otherwise, is uh, zero. So zero meters per second squared. Um, and then in the Y, it's always going to be uh, the acceleration due to gravity. So minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So we've got the acceleration done, um, and now let's focus on uh, what other variable we have. We have um, the initial velocity in the x and the initial velocity in the y. So it's not given to us directly, but we're given it because we have the angle and we have the magnitude. We can find the x component and the y component. So let's go ahead and solve for that. So we have the initial velocity in the x. So by this point, you should know how to do this, but imagine it's like a triangle. If we want to find the x component of this, you just take the magnitude and multiply it by the cosine of our angle. So 46.6 cosine of 42.2. Uh, and so go ahead and plug that in. So we have 46.6 cosine 42.2. So yeah, you're going to get 34.52. This is velocity, so we're in meters per second. And this, keep in this is the x. So this is this value right here. And then the initial velocity in the y is the same thing, but we just do sine. So 46.6 sine of 42.2, right? Because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So 46.6 sine of 42.2. And you're going to get it equals 31.30 meters per second. Very cool. So you can write these up here. I don't have enough room, so I'm just going to leave it. Uh, but now we have the initial velocity in the x and the initial velocity in the y. And so uh, these are basically all the variables that we have. And now we're going to use these to actually solve for different things. So let's start with A. So A is going to be the maximum height reached uh, by the projectile. So whenever you solve a kinematic equation, uh, you should just, you can look up just kinematic equations on Google. There's going to be about four of them or, well, you can derive them. But mainly you're just going to be dealing with uh, four main ones. But um when you're dealing with um, kinematic equations, you're basically going to need three different variables to solve. But notice that we only have two in each case. So when we solve for these, we're going to have to basically, based on the thing they're asking, uh, manipulate the or choose a variable that's going to be based on the thing. So you'll see an A. So A is going to be the maximum height reached. So we want to find what this distance is, basically. And so what I know this is, I'm gonna, I know that this is going to be the delta Y, right? The maximum height is just the change in the height. Uh, at this point. So we're going to be solving for delta y. But keep in mind, we need delta y. We have a um, in the y, and we also have v sub 0 y. But keep in mind, I said we need three. So what variable are we going to have? Do we know what time this occurs? We don't. But do we know the velocity at this point? And that's the thing we do know. So whenever you're reaching the maximum height, you need to know that the velocity in the y direction is always going to be zero. That's just a thing you know. So maximum height is when the uh, the velocity in the y equals zero. So when we solve this kinematic equation, we can plug in zero for the final velocity because that's the point, right? That's the point at which it's maximum height. So that will give us our delta y. So the equation we're going to use here is v, y, or v sub y squared equals v sub zero y squared 
plus 2a delta y. And so keep in, the, uh, keep in mind why we're using this equation. We have v, right, which is 0. We have the initial uh, velocity in the y, right, which we found right here. We know the acceleration in the y, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we can solve for our delta y, which is the maximum height reached, right, because that's the change in the y. OK, so let's just go ahead and plug it in. So plugging in 0, this is 0 squared, so I'm just going to leave it equals b sub 0 y squared, so 31.30 squared plus 2 times a minus 9.8 times delta y. So just manipulate these equations. So move this to the other side and then divide by this. So minus 31.30 squared divided by 2 times minus 9.8. You're going to get a value of 49, 49 point uh 98 so 49.98 keep in mind this is going to be in meters since we're dealing with distance here so 49.98 meters that's going to be your answer to a or the maximum height reach so it's going to go up 49.98 meters and then it's going to go back down so that's a let's move on to b b is going to be the total time in the air so this one so whenever you do kinematics you can basically use any equation to solve it it's just easier ways to do it. So when I think about this, well, I know we're going to be solving for time, right? They say the total time in the air, so I know t is what we're solving for. Now, what equations involve t? So this one doesn't involve t, so we can't use this one. But one of the equations, this is one you should know by heart, is that v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. So if I know the final velocity, I know the initial velocity, I know the acceleration, I can just solve for the time. And so do we know that here? So uh, the total time in the air is going to be this way. So when I think about this, I say, well, the velocity, right? The way we're going to solve this is a little bit of a trick. You can't do it the conventional way where you just assume that, right? The acceleration at the end is zero and stuff like that. The way you're going to do it is a trick based on um, the, like the maximum point. So I know that the time it takes to get to the maximum point is the same amount of time it takes to go from the maximum point to where it stops. That's just a little rule you need to know. So if you know that, we can find the time it takes to get to the maximum point and then just multiply by two. That's uh, the general way I would solve for this. So if we can find this time, the time it takes to get to here, right? This, we just multiply by two and that gives us to where it stops. That's just a little trick. So how do we find the time it takes to get to there though? So for that one, we know the velocity at that point is zero. We agreed on that based on the last problem. So this velocity is zero. We know the initial velocity and we know acceleration, right? And so we're just going to use the y components of all these, right? So v sub zero y equals v, or sorry, v sub y equals v sub zero y plus a sub y times t. Because we know the acceleration in the y, we know um, the velocity in the y, or the initial and then the fi uh, final, which when I say final, I'm just referring to the point. So this point here. And we're just going to multiply it by 2. So v sub zero y is 0. And then that's going to be equal to the initial velocity in the y, 31.30 squared, plus minus 9.8 times t, right? Because it's negative. Um, so yeah, we'll move it to the other side. Sorry, this isn't squared. I don't know why I said that. Right, 0 equals... Yeah, sorry, 0 equals 31.30 plus... Uh, minus 9.8 times t. Right, so just plugging each one, this value, this value, and then we said at maximum height it's zero. So solving for this, minus 31.30 divided by minus 9.8. Yeah, nice. Okay, so t equals 3.19. And so this is going to be in seconds, but keep in mind what we solve for here. We solve for the time it takes for it to get to here. But we said it's going to be double it, and that's going to be how long it's in the air. So if you can just multiply by 2, you're good. So multiply this value by 2, 3.19 times 2. You're going to get, right, so times 2, 6.38 seconds. Sorry, you're gonna get 6.387755. So 6.39. 
I just rounded this, right? So I use the exact value and you'll get 6.39, but if you just use this, you would get 6.38. So this is the wrong decimal. So 6.39, and that's gonna be seconds. So this is how long it's gonna be in the air, right? So we just found this time and then multiplied by two. So like that. Um, that's B. So 6.39 seconds. There's your B. Now let's do C. C is the total horizontal distance covered. So for this one, uh, we're going to use another kinematic formula. And so keep in mind, we're doing, they say horizontal. So I know automatically we're going to be working in the X. So we have basically all the time, value, uh, time variables. We have time now. So the equation I'm going to use is delta X equals V sub zero times T is one half a t squared. This is another formula that's extremely important to know. And so keep in mind this is v sub 0 x, this is a sub x. So I know that we're not accelerating at all in the horizontal direction. So because when we do these problems, you always basically assume unless otherwise a sub x is 0. So this basically just goes away. So essentially, it's just how fast are we traveling for how long? So we just kind of take our velocity in the x, which we found in the beginning, 35 or 34.52 times time. So the time is going to be 6.39, right? Because that's how long we travel in the air. So 34.52 times 6.39. So you're going to have 220.58. So 221. Keep in mind this is um, distance, so we're dealing with meters. 121 meters. So we just took the velocity in x and since acceleration is zero, it just becomes a lot easier. So we have a, b, and c. Now let's go ahead and do d. So for d, we're going to be finding the velocity of the projectile 1.50 seconds um, after firing. So keep in mind they say the velocity of the projectile, which means we're going to have to find the magnitude of it. And we're going to be dealing with not just x or y, we're going to have to combine them. We need to find the velocity in the x at this time, the velocity in the y at this time, and we're going to combine them. Um, so yeah, so we got to find vx and vy. So let's just start with what we know. Um, we're going to be finding vx and vy, right? 1.5 seconds after, okay? So vx, if you just think about this, we know v sub 0x is this value right here, okay? But we know the acceleration is 0. So if we don't accelerate at all, the velocity is going to remain the same in the x, okay? So 1.5 seconds after, and we can prove this by a formula, but intuitively, you should just know it's the same value, 34.52, yeah, 34.52 meters per second. And so we can prove that just by this formula right here, the one we used right here, t equals v sub zero plus a times t. So v sub zero is 34.52, 4.52 and then a is zero so this just goes to zero and we have our velocity right because we would say 34.52 plus zero times 1.5 so still 34.52 okay great so now we got to find y so that's going to just be the basically the same formula but instead of uh this canceling there's an actual value right because it's minus 9.8 um because right, all these problems are constant acceleration. So v sub y equals v sub 0 y, which we know is 31.30 plus minus 9.8 times t, which we know is 1.5 seconds, because that's the point we're finding it. 31.30 minus 9.8 times 1.5. So yeah, you're going to get 16.6 meters per second. Okay, so now we have it in the x, we have it in the y, we just got to combine it. So the way we find, uh, the way we combine them is by doing square root of them added up. Let's make sure you square it too. Right, so this is just the Pythagorean theorem, right? It's like this. We have the x, we have the y, right? It's a, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Where this is c, and then this is a and b. You should just know that by now. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and do this. So square root both these values, 16.6 squared plus 34.52 squared. 
and you're gonna get it equals 38.3 so 38.3 and that's going to be meters per second so this is going to be our velocity uh, of the projectile 1.5 seconds after firing and so generally when you do this you also want to find the angle we're going to do that too even though it doesn't state it so the way you do that is your angle theta relative to the horizontal is just going to be equal to um, the y over the x the y component over the x component so we know our y is 16.6 and then our x is 34.52. So arc tangent y over x equals theta. So go ahead and do this. 16.6 .6 divided by 34.52. Yeah, so you're going to get equals 25.68 degrees. So this is your angle, the horizontal. This is actually your speed. So this is what they want for D. But yeah, so we just use these. We just use the um, kinematic equations to solve these. We ma uh, manipulated them in certain ways. But yeah, so these right here are going to be your answers. This is A. This is B right here. C, and then right here is your D. So yeah, these are going to be the answers, and hopefully you found this useful.